Kia Year 12 and 13. This is um, the first part of question one from the 2016 differentiation paper. So I've got two achieved questions and a merit question, um, so some good basic revision. Okay, this is the first question. Um, differentiate y equals the following expression. So as usual, we're going to rewrite that with um, negative powers to make life easier. So we've got 1 plus x minus x to the negative 1 plus x to the negative 2. So this is a question that could be in a level 2 paper. Um, very straightforward. It's just polynomial differentiation. So dy by dx is equal to 1. Right, so here I've got minus times negative 1, so we bring down that power and we get plus x to the negative 2. Um, same again on this one, bring down the power, and we've got minus 2x to the negative 3. Okay, let's clean that up, and we get, uh, what have we got? 1 plus 1 over x squared minus 2 over x cubed. Now, as I've said in class lots of times, although it's hideously ugly, that is a perfectly acceptable answer. So we don't have to write it like this. That gets the tick there. That makes me happier. But you're going to be in a big hurry in the exam, so fine to do this one here. Right, so that's an achieved question. Right, next question. All right, everyone's favourite subject, it's a trig equation in context. So we've got the height of a tide at a beach today is given by this function here. I've left out the beautiful picture that was in the exam paper um, of a beach. And h is the height of water relative to the mean sea level, right? Remember, always read these questions carefully. T is the time in hours after midnight. At what rate was the height of the tide changing at that beach at 9am today. So we're asked to find h dash of t and then we're going to substitute in t equals 9 because it's the time in hours after midnight. So it's a um, trig plus chain rule derivative. I'll just change the pen colour to something better. We'll go with green. h dash of t. Well, what have we got? Well, the derivative of sine is cosine. So let's do that bit first. So we're going to have 0.8 cos... 4 pi on 25, t plus pi on 2. And now we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is going to be times 4 pi on 25. So just the coefficient of that t. Um, that's going to simplify to, what have we got here? Well, we can do 3.2 pi on 25 even though that is ugly as well, but that's okay, times cos of this thing here. So that's my derivative. Now what I've got to do now is sub in t equals 9. I'm going to do that on a new slide. Please let me know if there's a problem with um, stuff getting cut off because um, they've changed the way the package I use to make the videos works a bit. Alright, so when we substitute in, we're going to get um, roughly for that first bit 0 0.40212 was what I got um, and then substituting in t equals 9 I'll do that in one more step so we're going to have 36 pi on 25 plus pi on 2 okay so cleaning that up what do I get now, you don't have to do it in this many steps, but I'm doing this in case there's anyone out there who's having trouble matching up their answer to the assessment schedule answer or anything like that. So this in here works out to be this, and that then gives me a final answer of 0.395001, which is roughly 0 0.395 metres per hour. Okay, so that's the rate of change that we've been asked to give. Alright, on to the last question, which is a nice little parametric differentiation problem. Okay, well we've got a curve that's been defined by these two parametric equations. 
So remember, what we've got here is we've got a parameter t, and it's going to affect both my x and y. And that will let me trace out a curve. And we're asked to find the gradient of the tangent to the curve, where t equals pi on 4. So what we're looking for is dy by dx. But we can't get it directly, so we're going to get it like this, the usual way when we do parametric. This is the only time I'm happy with using a diagonal fraction sign, but it works, it works okay here. So what do I do first? I find dx by dt, and I find dy by dt. And if you get one of those right, you've got an achieved tick. But we'd rather get the whole thing right. So that's step one. And then I'm going to evaluate the derivative at t equals pi on 4. So we'll do a new slide for all of that. Okay, so x equals 2 cos 2t dx by dt will be negative 2 sine 2t times 2, which is negative 4 sine 2t. y is equal to tan squared t. So dy by dx, using the chain rule here, is going to be 2 tan t times the derivative of the inside function, which will be 6 squared t. Right, now we're going to put that together to get dy by dx. Whoops, that should say, sorry, that should say dy by dt here. And I, uh, uh, because that's a bit of a mess, I'll do another slide. Okay, so dy by dx is equal to, well, dy by dt, so 2 tan t 6 squared t divided by dx by dt, which is negative 4 sine 2t. Now I need to evaluate all of that when um, t equals pi on 4. Um, I'd rather move the 6 squared t, write it out as 1 over cos squared t, so we're going to do that. So we get 2 tan t over negative 4 sine 2t cos squared of t. Um, obviously this simplifies to give me a negative 2 on the bottom. So, as usual, working with my little special triangle, what do we know about tan of pi on 4? Well, tan of pi on 4 is equal to 1 sine of 2t. So down here we've got negative 2. And we've got sine of pi on 2. And then we've got cos squared of t. Well, cos squared is 1 over root 2. So we're going to have 1 over root 2 squared. Now the 2 and the 1 over root 2 squared simplify out, and sine of pi on 2 is equal to 1, so it's 1 divided by negative 1, so my derivative is negative 1. Alright, so when t is equal to pi on 4, the gradient of the tangent is just equal to negative 1. Okay, so that was a merit question, or remember you get an achieved tick if you've got one of your derivatives.